Good morning, good morning, good morning, happy Sunday, happy new week, we thank the Lord, He owns the key to our lives, we thank the Lord for keeping us, He owns the key to our lives, and we are His children, we thank God for His mercies, we thank God for Jesus who always advocates for us. We are glad that we have a merciful Father, a great King, a good God. Hallelujah. All right. So this morning we're going to continue uh, the series of studies that we've been on in our Sunday school classes. Um, last week we were looking at the topic rapture. And the week before that, we started looking at uh, the signs of the end times. And like I've always, like I've been saying the last uh, two weeks, uh, over the next five weeks or thereabout, uh, we are going through a series of studies, you know, that talks about all that will happen in the end, at the end of this age, in and around the end of this age. So the signs of the end time, rapture, the antichrist, the thousand-year reign of Jesus, you know, the judgment and all of that stuff. And I think it's really great that we, we're getting to learn all of this at the beginning of this year. Uh, because you never know, this may be the year. This may be the year where the Lord returns. This may be the year where the rapture happens. And this may be the year where all of this gets fully in motion. Amen. All right, so um, for those of us who are home, good morning to you as well. Um, we are looking at Lesson 45 today, and the topic of this morning is the Antichrist. Lesson 45 in our Sunday School Manual, the Antichrist. And we have a prayer point this morning that I'd like for us to pray um, before we even get into teaching or talking about anything. And the prayer point, I'd like you to just bow your heads briefly and pray, is to ask the Father that he will not allow you enter into the deception of Satan. Ask the Lord that he will help you by the Holy Spirit not to enter into the deception of Satan. And also pray, as you pray for yourself, that you will not enter the deception of Satan. Also pray for those who are yet to be saved. Those who we know right now, they are under the deception of Satan. That the Lord will free them from that deception. He will open their eyes. He will remove the scales from their eyes and from their minds and from their hearts and from their souls and from their spirits. So they will be free from the deception of Satan. Father, today as your children, we ask you, God, by, that we ask for your help. That by your spirit, by your mighty power, by your great grace and mercy and goodness, you will free us from the deception of Satan. You will free us from the deception of the devil that is in the word. And all those who are yet to be saved, you will free them, God, from the deception of sweet lies from the deception of the white lies of the devil, the enemy of their souls. We ask for freedom from all manners and all forms of deception for the unsaved, so that they will become saved, so that they will receive the truth of your word and the truth of your work and what you have done through Jesus. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so lesson 45, the Antichrist is our topic, and our lesson text is from the book of 1 John, 1 John chapter 2. Um, we'll read from verse 18 to 26. 1 John chapter 2, verse 18 to 26. First John chapter 2, verse 18 to 26. It says, I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, Little children, 
It is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists, many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have written to you because you do not, because you, I have written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that He has promised us, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. Amen. Amen. We thank God for His Word. And then our memory verse is from the book of uh, 1 John as well. 1 John chapter 2, verse 22. 1 John chapter 2, verse 22. And we'll read it uh, if you're there. One, to go. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. 1 John 2. 22. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so let's, uh, let's start to talk about this, the Antichrist. I think before we even, you know, go too far into the conversation, it's important to set the record straight. We will learn about the Antichrist today, but for us as the church, you know, we will not see the Antichrist, okay, because we will not be here. So that's the first thing to just note. We will learn, we will understand what will happen in the Word, but you're not going to be there, okay? You're not going to see the Antichrist, all right? You may be seeing, looking down from heaven and seeing what's going on, you know, but you won't be here to see the Antichrist because that's what Scripture says. I'm not the one saying it, right? The Antichrist is not going to be revealed until after we are out, until after the rapture, until after we are caught up and the church is out of this place. So that's the first thing to note. So then why are we... Why, why is it in the Bible, you know, if, if the children of God, if the church is not going to see, it, see him or going to experience him? So why is he there? I think it's important to also keep in mind that there will be a remnant. There will, even after the rapture, even when the Antichrist, you know, comes on the stage, there will still be a bunch of people who will, during those seasons of tribulation, come to Christ. I think scripture is there for them too, so that they will be aware of what's going on. So that they will actually have the faith to say, okay, I know I have missed it. I know I didn't believe in Christ when I first had that opportunity. But now I know what's happened. I can see that the rapture has happened. These people are out. So I need to stand my ground to the very end. I need to endure now. So I believe scripture is there for those folks who will come to know Christ and who will, you know, stand with Jesus after the fact. But it's for us here right now, you, you ain't going to see that. You will not be here. Amen. All right, so who's the Antichrist? Let's uh, just walk through the lesson text that we read. 1 John uh, 2, we started from verse 18. And verse 18 makes it very, very plain, and very clear. It says, little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard, that the Antichrist is coming. So point number one is that the Scripture says, Scripture teaches, the Word of God makes it plain that the Antichrist is coming. What else does it say? It says the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists, 
have come. Now, every word in Scripture is important. There is no word in Scripture that is a mistake or that is an error or that is not true. Many antichrists have come. Now, that suggests that there is more than one antichrist, okay? Many have come. It means there have been some in the past, but then there's also one that is coming. The Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have come. And as we read through the day, you will, you will come to understand what Scripture is saying about there that there have been many Antichrists. Uh, and then there's this other one that is coming. From the book of Daniel, um, and also in the book of Revelation, Scripture makes this very clear. Uh, in the book of Ezekiel, Scripture makes this very clear. There's nothing that is going to happen in this world that God has not you know, presented to us as children so that we may understand what's going on. So we'll, we'll come back to that, but there, there have been, um, you know, uh, antichrists. There, is, there are antichrists, and there is one that is also coming. What else from our lesson text? The time of the end, there will be perilous times in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. If you read it, this is Paul talking to Timothy. He says, Timothy, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. The end of this age will be quite perilous. It will be quite challenging and difficult for those who will be here. The Antichrists are many, in verse 18, like we just read, and they have various manifestations and forms. The Antichrists are not genuine people of God. They only pretend to be. So, in other words, there can even be Antichrists coming out of the church, coming out of the, you know, the body of Christ. You know, I'm trying to do air braces. There will even be Antichrists coming out of the body of Christ. Okay? This is not news. It's in the Bible, and we are seeing it in our word today. Uh, as Scripture says in our text in 1 John 2, 19, it says, They went out from us, but they were not from us. They were not of us. Um, we also are, in verse 20, acknowledge not to underestimate the function of the Holy Spirit when he reveals uh, who the Antichrist is to you, or when he reveals that Antichrist spirit to you. Uh, because we know there have been many, and there are some now, and there is also one that is coming. Do not give up the truth because of sweet lies. We know that the devil is always trying to deceive. Um, you know, and, and if you... If you you know, go out in the news, you will hear sort of things that will make you very confused. Not just, a, just the news, but, you know, people talk about the end times. Everybody has something to say. You know, some people paint these adventurous pictures. But please, for you and I, we have to go back to what's in the scripture that God has put together for us. People like to say, you know, things that look weird and things that get you very sensational about the end times. You know, don't buy into those deceptions and lies. Look at the Scripture. Scripture makes things very plain, very easy. Okay? Read the Bible. Read the book of Daniel. Read the book of, of, of uh, Revelations. First John, Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians. It makes these things very plain. And, and that's the thing. You know, you look on, like, YouTube and Facebook. Everybody's saying a lot of things that makes you, you know, get all worked up. You know, sensation, sensationalism, that's the word. You know, but that's not it. Do not give up the truth because of sweet lies. We know that the Antichrist is indeed a liar. You know, there are some, some people who say, oh, the Antichrist has already come and gone. You know, forget about it. He's already come and gone, you know. We are now in the, we are now in the day of the Lord. You know, we are now in the thousand year reign of Christ. <laughs> no, we are not. No, we are not. So many things that people are saying out there. No, we are not. Uh, all right, so what else? A man who denies God and the Father and Jesus as the Son is the Antichrist. Now, I think it's, it's important that we know what, that's, what, what that means when he says a man who denies God, the Father, and denies the Son. It's not just saying deny, that, oh, Jesus is not Jesus or God is not God. It's more than that when he says he denies the Father and denies the Son. Now, what that's, that's, that's saying, in essence, is that this, this person or this entity or whatever is completely averse to who God is, is opposite to God the Father, to, to God the Son, challenges 
the purposes and the plans stands always stands in opposition to the plans and the purposes of God. So it's not just deny to say, no, I deny that Jesus is not Jesus. It's not, as, it's not as basic as that. It's more than that. When he says the, the spirit of the Antichrist denies the Father and denies the Son, it's, it's more than just saying, oh, Jesus was not real. That's, that's basic. That's not it. It's about standing and opposing the purposes of God, the purposes of Jesus. So when you understand what that means to deny the Father and the Son, you begin to understand again what Scripture is saying in 1 John 1, 18, that there have been antichrists. You now look back through history, right? And the Holy Spirit now helps you begin to identify all, the, all, all this, what people, you know, and entities and embodiments of things that have opposed the, the work of God, opposed the move of God, the purpose and the plans of God that we know has been laid down from, from the beginning. You know, you can, if you look in the Old Testament, you can see it as far back as before Jesus was born, right? When the king was killing every male child, right? That was an opposition to the plan and the purposes of God because he didn't want that, you know, that, line, that lineage to continue through which Jesus would come. And if you go and you read back in the book of Esther and you read all the way back, you know, in the book of the kings, you will see all the oppositions, all the people who have stood in opposition to God's plan. And even in more recent history, we know of a very, you know, a figure that really fits that mold. The man Hitler, right? He opposed, you know, he was demon, super, super demon-possessed, opposed the people of God, the nation of Israel. He wanted to wipe out every Jew from the nation of the earth. And we know that God's plan is always tied to the nation of Israel. So we can see these things. We know these things for a fact. We can look back to all these kings and all these people, all these emperors of the past, the, 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 the Nero's, Emperor Nero, these people have stood in opposition, not just of their own volition. These people are super demon-possessed. You must understand this, that the spirit of the Antichrist is the spirit of the devil, the spirit of Satan. And that's what Satan has been doing from the beginning, opposing to God. So when you see a man, a woman, whoever, that's opposing God and, and has done all these all this weird and terrible things, they are not just doing it because, oh, because they are a military general. No, these people are demon-possessed people, okay? They are filled with the spirit of Satan. That's the spirit of the Antichrist. Denies the Father, denies the Son. Amen. What else uh, did we pick up from our text? It says, we abide in the truth. If we abide in the truth, we, we will avoid being swept away and keep to the doctrine of Christ. And then keeping Christ's doctrine will prevent us from seduction and preserve us to eternal life. Okay? Now, through Scripture, there are many names of the Antichrist. It's called different things at different times through, through different revelations, you know. The revelation that John had and how, you know, the Lord presented he, he, this image to him was different from the one that Daniel had or the one that Ezekiel had. So there are many names in Scripture, you know, from different revelations that have been given about who the Antichrist is. But let's look at a couple of them. Uh, let's turn to the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7, uh, verse 8. Daniel chapter 7, verse 8. It says, I was considering the horns, and there was another horn, a little horn, coming up among them, before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots. And there in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking pompous words. So, in Daniel's revelation, and, you know, let's be specific here. The little horn that he's talking about, it says, I was considering the horns, and there was another, another horn, a little horn. That little horn is referring to the Antichrist that is coming. If we go back and if you read all, the whole of Daniel chapter 7, Daniel had a vision, right, where he saw, first of all, he saw four beasts that came out of the sea. Right, and then on that fourth on that fourth beast, you know, another horn came up on up on that fourth beast, that fourth beast, 
And that Forbes originally had like seven horns, and then another horn came up. And then if you read further that from verse 19 down to about 25 of Daniel 7, you will see the explanation of the vision that he had. The little horn that he's referring to here is the coming Antichrist, the Antichrist that will come after the rapture. That's what that's referring to. So the, one of the names um, of the Antichrist that will come is the little horn. And what does that little horn mean? If you read further, it explains it in Daniel 7. This person is not going to be just a, a, a big, you know, significant person from the very beginning. He's going to be a very insignificant person. And that's what's going to really wow everybody. Okay? His, his beginnings is going to be, you know, nothing to write home about. That's what's going to make it so, so sensational. Because it's a little horn. You know, it's like how is, you know, how we say, you know, you, you, know, you, you read things and you see this about, like they said, the American dream. You know, this person was a refugee, and they came from here to there, and now they are the greatest whatever in the world. It's, it's sensational. Okay? They don't, they don't, it doesn't look like, they're not, it's not going to be the son of a king. Okay? It's going to be some random person who nobody thinks anything about. And then when he starts to rise, as the demons have been pumped into him or her, it's going to be amazing. And that's what's going to get a lot of people wowed, like, oh, my goodness, this must be the real deal. When he starts, you know, Presenting himself to be God. When he starts presenting himself to be Christ, he's a little horn. Formerly insignificant, but now he becomes so significant. You know, the, the, the devil is always looking to copy what God has done. You know, just like Jesus came and was born in a manger, he was born to a carpenter and, a, you know, and little Mary. The little horn is going to, you know, come in a way like that too. It's going to come progressively. It's going to rise through the ranks of the demonic progressively. A little horn. That's how Daniel, that's how it was described in the, in the book of Daniel. In 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3. Let's see what's another name for this Antichrist that is coming. It says, let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. So he's also known as the man of sin and the son of perdition. This dude, <laughs> he will be the embodiment of sinfulness, the embodiment of perdition. In Revelation 13, verse, if you read from verse 2 to 8, he's referred to as the beast. Matthew 24, uh, he's referred, referred to as the false Christ. He's also in verse 4, if you continue reading 2 Thessalonians, it says, Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is a God. He's a liar. He's a liar, lying that he is God. He's a false prophet. He's the deceiver. He's a vile person. That's, that's, a, that's a very strong word. He's a vile person. He's a person that has no idea of mercy, of kindness, of goodness. He's a vile person. He's the extreme of wickedness. And this is not just because that's who he is. It's the, it's the infusion of all the darkness and all the, you know, the things from the, the, from the from the devil that has been pumped into him, the demons that work with him, the demons that reside in him. He's a vile person. Let's look at it. Um, Daniel 11, verse 21. Daniel 11, 21. And in his place shall arise a vile person to whom they will not give the honor of royalty. But he shall come in peaceably and seize the kingdom by intrigue. See, that's what I just said. He says, let me, let me explain what this verse is saying. And in his place shall arise a vile person to whom they will not give the honor of royalty. So what that means is that he's not going to come from a royal line. He's not going to be a significant person. He doesn't have the honor of royalty. His father is not a king. His mother is not a queen. 
For see, he will come in peaceably and seize the kingdom by entry. That's what I was referring to earlier. He will seize the kingdom by entry. His life story will be so amazing. Kingdom by intrigue. Yeah. Deception. Yeah. You know, by fireworks. The story will be so, like, you know, mesmerizing. But he's not a, you know, some important person. He just comes in peaceably, little by little, little by little, little by little. And everyone is giving him that honor. They're giving him their power. They're saying, you are the one. You are the one. You are the one. And then that's how the nations of the earth. Because, and another thing that to, to also make it clear, when Scripture says, you know, there have been many antichrists, and there's this antichrist that is coming, understand that all these, this is the only antichrist that will have total rule over the whole world. Okay? There have been many such people who have tried to dominate the world, but they never, they never were able to. All right? But this antichrist will be the only one who actually is the ruler of the whole world. This will be after we are gone. This is after the fact. Okay, we're not here for this. He will actually be the first person and the only one to dominate the whole world. A vile person. Let's read it one last time. Daniel eleven twenty one. And in his place shall rise a vile person to whom they will not give the honor of royalty, but he shall come in peaceably and seize the kingdom by intrigue. And then lastly, 1 Thessalonians re- refers to him uh, 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 8, as a wicked one, a wicked, wicked, wicked person. Amen. Um, let's, let's, I want to just add a little bit of color. If we go back to Daniel 7, and uh, let's read from verse 19. Daniel 7, verse 19. So, Daniel had this vision, right? And then he asked the angel who was with him to say, hey, please, you know, explain this vision to me. I want to understand what I'm seeing here. So this was the, the, the clarification of that. Daniel 7, verse 19. He says, Then I wished to know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all the others, exceedingly dreadful, with its teeth of iron and its nails of bronze, which devoured broken pieces, and trampled the residue with its feet, and the ten horns that were on its head, and the other horn which came up, before which three fell, namely that horn which had eyes and which had eyes and a mouth which spoke pompous words, whose appearance was greater than it than his fellows. I was watching, and the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them, until the ancient of days came. And the judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High. And the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, trample it, and break it in pieces. The ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from his kingdom, and another shall arise after them, he shall be different from the first ones and shall subdue three kings. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and laws. Then the saints shall be given into his, then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and a half time. Times, times and a half time. That's talking about the three and a, uh, and a half year period. Um, you know, after the you know, of the treaty with Israel that he's going to sign. Time, times, and a half time. That's one, twice, and a half, three and a half years that he's talking about. So, just I just wanted to give you a, a little bit more, more description when I was saying, to explain the point I was making about the fact that this would be the first person and the only one of this Antichrist to actually subdue the whole earth. And you see how scripture also, you know, shows that this power will be given to him, this kings and this rulers, you know. Because think about it, after the rapture, the earth is going to be in chaos. Everybody's going to be confused, okay? Nobody's going to know what's, like, they will be confused. The whole earth will be thrown into chaos because the, all the Christians are gone. All the, all the people of God are gone. The church is gone. So 
people will begin to stand up to say, okay, well, you know, it's this Christian's fault because now our world is in chaos. Now we don't know what to do. Now everything is haphazard. They will blame the Christians. So anyone, but then there will be people who are wanting to become, you know, to, to believe in Christ and to follow God and to obey God's command. But you will not be able to do that freely because the chaos that is in the world will be blamed on those who have left. They will say, well, the Christians are the ones who caused us to be in this situation. But people will still be, you know, coming into the fold and coming into the faith. It be a different experience for them. It will be a challenging experience for them. That's what the book of Revelation shows. So much to say. But let's keep going. Um, what is the mission of the Antichrist? He will receive power from Satan to rule the world. And that's what's going to make it easy for him to rule the world because the world is in so much confusion. He will walk great miracles to deceive people. In, in Revelation 13, from 11 to 13, you see this. He will position himself and his images in strategic holy places and force people to worship them. He will speak great things and blasphemies. He will make war with the saints. And when he says make war with the saints, that's referring to the remnants, the, the people who will become saved after the rapture and after, this, and after he's on the stage. He will make war with the saints, the nation of Israel. He will speak and prophesy lies to confuse people. He will persecute the remnants, that's what I just said, who will be faithful to God and even kill them. He will take control of both the political and economic powers of the word. That's where, you know, we start talking about the mark of the beast, right? Because that's how, you know, economic power and political power, you can do none of that if you don't have this mark of the beast. And then he will give, yes, the identification number to those who will accept him. The number is 666, as we know. Um, and scripture also gives some explanation about that. It is the, the number of a name, the name of a man, the number of a man. And uh, I just want to say one, a note about you know, just that, that's, that identification and the 66 old thing. Some people have asked to say, well, why does God not forgive you know, people who will accept this mark of the beast and so on and so forth? It's, when you ask that question, it's almost ask, like asking, why does God not forgive Satan? That's what you're trying to ask. People at that time who will receive the mark of the beast, you, you will almost, you're no longer what God created. You are, you, are, you are almost a different entity at that point. Okay? You are a changed being. So you have nothing to do with God because you have, you have now... You know, you are now joined to Satan by his spirit that is now working inside you. You are changed internally. Your mental faculty, all that you are, is not what God created anymore. So, don't be swayed by those kind of talk. talk. Oh, why doesn't God forgive those who take the mark of the beast? Well, I'll ask you the same question. Why doesn't God, God forgive Satan? You are completely opposed. You are a changed image. You are not what God created in the beginning. Just a, just a quick note about that. And then what is the end of the Antichrist? We know that the Antichrist will also see his end. In Revelation 19, 20, this is the last text we'll read because we're out of time. Revelations 19, verse 20. See what will happen to the Antichrist at the end. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire. So we know he will, come, he will come to an end. He will not forever dominate the world. Actually, he only dominated the world for about three and a half years plus. It's not a long period of time. Those that accept the Antichrist and receive his sign will also be cast into the lake of fire. The Ancient of Days will take away the kingdom from the Antichrist and establish his holy kingdom forever. Amen. I want to wrap this up by, by how I started. We are learning these things. It's in scripture. Um, but it is not for you to be afraid or to be worried about this. Because again, remember, you will not be here when the Antichrist is on the earth. You will not be here. You would have been raptured. If you are saved, that is, 
if you are saved, if you believe in Jesus, if you are a child of God, if you, have, if you are without spot and wrinkle by the blood of Jesus because you have believed on, on Jesus' sacrifice on the cross for you, you are saved. You are not here. This, my personal belief or conviction from what I see in Scripture, why is this in the Bible? It's for those, it's for the remnant. Whoever was not saved at the time of the rapture, I believe this is for them so that they understand the events of things that's going to happen. So that they are not left without knowledge. They're not left without understanding. So, in essence, God is still merciful. And that's how good God is. God is still merciful. And that's why we love our Father. He is still merciful even after the rapture. Even after he is taking away his own people. He is still merciful to the remnant to give them a picture of what, what will happen. It really sheds a lot of light on what Scripture says, even while we were yet in sin, you know, he gave his son for us. Even though people would have lived all their life, the rapture would have happened, they never believed, they never accepted God, he still has records of events for them, so they have guidance. Amen. That's what I believe is the reason why, why this is here in Scripture. Uh, because you will not be here. You will not be here for it. The Antichrist does not come on the stage until after the rapture. This is very clearly expressed in Scripture in the book of Second Thessalonians. Very clear. Um, the mark of the beast does not exist until there is a beast. So, again, relax your mind. I know there's a lot of talk right now and with what's going on, you know, <laughs> vaccination and all that stuff. Please read the Bible, understand what Scripture says. That is not the mark of the beast. There is no beast. You are still here. I am still here, okay? So there's nothing going on yet. So we thank God for his word. Um, it's just for us to understand the, the seasons and the events of time that we are in in the word. And this is the time to save souls. You know, I'll wrap it up with this. It's the time to save souls. It's the time to get many as saved and ready for rapture as, as much as possible. Um, our conclusion says, some signs of the Antichrist have started manifesting now. For instance, um, some legislations are purely antichrist in nature. Therefore, believers should double their preparation towards the appearance of Christ, which will be sudden as a thief in the night. Amen. So let us pray the way we started again and ask the Father. Say, Father, please prevent me from entering into the deception of Satan. Father, keep me from entering into the deception of Satan. And for those who are unsaved, please save them from the lies and the deception of Satan. In Jesus' name we pray.